Hi, I'm Lydia. I'm speaking to you live from the Open Banking World Congress in Marbella, and I am joined by Michaeli from Infocet. Hi, Michaeli. Thanks for joining me today. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. Um, firstly, I thought it'd be really useful for everyone just to get an understanding of what Infocet is and what, what you do. Sure. Infocet is a qualified transfer service provider. At the moment, we are the largest in Europe. We are active in Europe and Latin America at the same time. Okay, this is our main focus. Uh, Infocet is now offering to large corporations as well as public entities uh, uh, trust services, mainly it's, uh, well qualified electronic delivery services, uh, okay, digital signature, o digital onboarding, digital ID, which is the main scope of my presentation today. Yeah, so yeah, just like you mentioned, you obviously gave a presentation to everyone live in Marbella today. Um, for the people who are watching who didn't get the chance to watch that presentation, could you just give a bit of an overview of what you covered and some of the key highlights from your presentation? Absolutely. We cover a decentralized identity, which is a state of the art of the evolution of uh, all digital identity. It's something that will affect each of us in the next one year, so <laughs> such a thing that it's pretty interesting also because in terms of uh, <coughs> regulatory evolution, in the European Commission has just decided to introduce a um, digital, uh, decentralized identity as a, a must in the next following year. So each of us will be um, given uh, uh, a new uh, well, digital ID. Uh, we will wear it in our mobile wallet, mm -hmm. uh, eliminating uh, whatever kind of smart electronic ID document we have been given in the meantime, and perhaps also the traditional passports. Um, so, well, uh, my main presentation was about that kind of technology yeah. and, uh, uh, well, um, an overall stack that we built up just to anticipate that kind of change mm -hmm. with uh, already on-field uh, environment built up. So, this is uh, mainly what it was about. What do you see as some of the challenges with rolling out digital ID and just the evolution of that going forwards? Well, the challenge is that uh, well, uh, uh, the way how okay, the mechanism will uh, be developing is just uh, according to a viral mechanism. Mm -hmm. So it means that uh, well, we need to wait for okay, uh, the, the pioneers okay, to uh, build up the initial ecosystems just to become more and more valuable. So, uh, sorry, uh, viral. So it means that uh, at the end of the story, um, as soon as we will achieve, we have achieved the critical mass, then uh, the variety will become exponential. So that's the reason also, uh, because uh, uh, the reason why, uh, well, we think that uh, well, we start uh, uh, well um, having large systems uh, up and running by the end <coughs> of this year, then yeah. next year will be well, well uh, quite important increase, but the exponential growth will have uh, starting from 2024 onwards. Great, and then what do you see for digital identity, say 10 years from now? What do you think that will look like? Well, first of all, the, 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 the definition of digital identity will change dramatically because yeah. we won't only be only uh, the one that we are used to have uh, all in our uh, all passport, right? Mm -hmm. It's not having to do with that kind of attributes only, okay? So mm, not only our birthday, the nationality, well, our... Um, residence address and perhaps uh, the expiration date, but also the, what we call the unreached identity. It's yeah. also having to do with certified educational degrees, so our medical records, uh, keep all uh, our uh, also, let's say, driving style statistics. All of these will compose a okay, well, sensitive data belonging to our digital identity. And these mm -hmm. are fundamental uh, to be kept uh, together with us and not being um, shared for the rest of our lives with any sort of relying part if we don't want it. And what about, when we talk about digital ID, a lot of the time we're saying it's a lot safer than just the traditional forms of ID, but what are the security and kind of fraud concerns when it comes to digital ID? Well, the new state of our technology is based on, on one side, okay, uh, the uh, um, blockchain upper ledger one, yeah. which is, uh, well, itself is just bringing uh, uh, well, um, fundamental security into the overall mechanisms. But on top of this, uh, what well, actors like us, a qualified mm -hmm. trust service provider, has well added okay, another level of trust. Okay, another level of uh, let's say inc encryption, right? So one plus one means uh, okay, well, the top level of security you may well uh, imagine. I think you also talked about digital onboarding. So what are the kind of new technologies and things we're seeing around uh, digital onboarding at the moment? Digital onboarding is strictly related to digital identity because at the end of the story, well, in order to uh, get your digital identity corroborated, you will have to be onboarded. Um, uh, but the difference is that with the new technology, you will have uh, just to, to do that once in your life, uh, and yeah. then uh, you will be in the position to reutilize, okay, while your uh, uh, initial onboarding for as many business transactions with as many relying parties as okay, you need it. 
And going back specifically to InfoCert, what can we expect to see from InfoCert? Like what's on your product roadmap? What can we expect to see from you in the next one to two years and things you're delivering? Well, uh, in this specific area, while we have launched platform, the platform name is uh, This Me. It's an acronym that stands for This Is Me, right? Yeah. And this is the platform we are currently more and more enriching in terms of feature. As I told you before, we have already, well, uh, some <coughs> banking customers, some pioneers, as I call them, are also, well, utilities and telco operators that decided to follow that path with us. Yeah. So what is going to happen in, uh, well, on, on one side, uh, okay, well, this uh, <coughs> platform and, and DECO feature um, are going to be uh, more and more reached uh, in, in the next following uh, uh, months. And on the other side, okay, well, the interoperability, well, uh, uh, among different actors playing the same ground will be uh, even uh, guaranteed. Okay, great. And who are you working with in this space? Are you collaborating with other companies, doing any partnerships, that kind of thing? Absolutely, because the overall, the overall stack, well, we, are, we have developed the core. We have developed also okay, well, uh, the, uh, what we call the wallet, right? So the yeah. digital wallet, this um, has been in-house development, but also we rely upon okay, uh, some uh, different layers that were uh, well, uh, manufactured by uh, some other partners, uh, like... Uh, Algorand, for example, that was one. Okay, yeah. Fabric is another one. Okay, mm -hmm. um, well, there's full set of different players that obviously okay, uh, we're uh, joining our effort in order to build up that level of uh, quality of service that we are now offering to our customer. Okay, great. And then just turning more generally to open banking, we're obviously at the Open Banking World Congress. What do you see as some of the most um, kind of exciting benefits that come from open banking, open finance, open data? Well, the most exciting is that, uh, you know, every, well, each of us will, uh, will take uh, back control after um, our own data uh, yeah. with uh, the maximum level of uh, uh, security. Uh, and this is, uh, well, uh, the core asset. And, uh, and in terms of, uh, well, um, the way how uh, we will engage business transactions online, it will be easier and easier. Yeah. It's frictionless and frictionless and uh, less time consuming. So this is, uh, this is crucial. So it goes towards uh, okay, what we want as uh, end users, right? Yeah. And then what about increasing adoption? Because that's one thing, especially in the UK, we've seen. We talked around a few years ago, we had 2 million people using open banking. I think it's now up to 4 million. Whilst they're still good numbers, still a tiny proportion of the population, what kind of things can we do to increase you know, the use of open banking and then people going towards digital identity as well? Yeah, open banking is, uh, well, um, First of all, it's, uh, it's really useful, right, um, as I yeah. told you before. So this is, uh, okay, well, uh, the main level we need <coughs> to uh, capitalize on in order to foster, you know, the uh, uh, diffusion. Uh, we know that the, there's a sort of, uh, uh, well, fight against some uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, generational fight in yeah. the sense that, you know, obviously, you know, elders are not um, so um, keen to adopt this kind of technology. They always uh, feel themselves insecure, yeah. insecure about the way how okay, they use technology. And also, well, uh, they feel that uh, well, due to the fact they are insecure, there may be some mistakes being made by, uh, by them that will compromise, you know, the, 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 the security of their accounts. So uh, this is uh, well, the fundamental area well, where well, each of us need to work after just to be 100% sure that more and more adopters will, uh, will uh, uh, increasingly um, be uh, thrown into the game. Uh, training, first of all, but yeah. also sensibilization about uh, well, uh, the top level of security mechanism that we have introduced into the overall um, arena. <coughs> Great, and you just touched on training there. It's been spoken about in quite a few sessions today around increasing financial education and how that would help a lot right. of all these um, things that we've spoken about. How can we increase financial education across all countries? Well, uh, it's, well on one side, uh, it's a top-down approach. So we yep. need to start from European Commission, if we talk about Europe, mm -hmm. and then we go to be reflected on to the national government and then to the all surveillance body and uh, well association representation bodies okay and then obviously it's also up to us as a well uh, uh, private market protagonist to all uh, do our uh, our job which is uh, play our part yeah and what are your thoughts as well on a lot of people have said they don't think we'll have this mass adoption until the regulators really push it do you think we need to wait for more prescriptive things from the regulators or we will Kind of see that I don't think increase. so. Don't, I don't think so. In terms of open banking, this is something that will not be 
uh, well, obviously regulation is fundamental just to well, uh, <coughs> be 100% sure that everything uh, is being done according to okay, well, uh, the uh, overall uh, um, uh, rules that make sense. Right? So GDPR obviously is uh, something that's fundamental to be kept. Security well, is obviously uh, a top priority. All of this is fundamental to be kept. If, no, if yeah. not, the market be, should be uh, or could be populated by, uh, let's say, uh, uncertain protagonists. Mm. Uh, so, and that point of view, regula uh, re um, regulation is fundamental, but uh, uh, in terms of market penetration, market diffusion, uh, I don't think that regulation will play a fundamental part. Yeah. Uh, it'd be up to us to offer more and more uh, um, interesting and appealing services. Yeah, no, totally makes sense. Um, I think we're actually at the end of our time now. Right. But thank you so much for your time and for sharing all your insights. Thank you. Thanks to you, everybody. Thank you.